I've been amazed this week at how cool it is to put your mark on most materials. Laser engravers allow you to etch almost any image onto almost any material. You searching for a good budget laser engraver? Look no longer. What's up everybody, JJ here, and Longer sent over their new Ray 5 laser engraver to see how someone experienced in 3D printing could handle a laser engraver. And I've gotta say, for this being their first laser engraver, they did so many things right here. And when it comes to length, they definitely made it longer than I was expecting. There's so many places for longer puns in this video, I'll try to minimize them, but you can just groan as loud as you want. I'm not gonna stop on your behalf. So Longer, as a company, has been making only 3D printers up until now, both professional and consumer grade 3D printers, both SLA and FDM machines as well. So for this laser engraver, I think they used a lot of the same technologies that we would expect in a 3D printer, and then just put it over here, and it makes it very easy to work with. So let's start off with the specs and features, because I think it covers a lot of your questions you might have. So huge build volume, this thing is basically a giant, this thing is basically a giant square, 400 millimeters by 400 millimeters in the build volume. It uses V wheels on aluminum extrusions. It's super easy to put together. It also has a great speed range all the way from 40 millimeters per minute to 6,000 millimeters per minute. So that super slow speed can be useful for cutting through big wood. And then that really high speed is really useful for just engraving onto paper. This is a 5.5 watt diode laser which is really good for engraving. You can get great results when engraving. Cutting out things is a little bit more difficult. It, you have to really slow it down. With some decently thick wood like this, you'll need a couple passes at pretty slow speeds. But they are coming out with a 10 watt laser module later this year. So if you're more interested in the cutting and less of the engraving stuff, then that 10 watt laser might be a better fit for you. The motherboard controlling this laser engraver is a 32 bit motherboard with Wi-Fi support. That 32 bits will give you more range of power outputs in your engraving. So a little bit more finer details you can get out of things. It also allows an SD card for offline printing. It's kind of like OctoPrint built into your printer in that you can have your laptop or computer in a totally different room. And then if you have your SD card loaded in your printer, you can remotely load your G code onto that SD card from a different room and then come in here and start it manually from the touch screen on the front. That's another really big feature. And they say this is the first laser engraving machine with a built-in touch screen, which makes using it just like using a 3D printer in that you load your G code on your SD card, put your SD card in and then, and then you can control things and start prints directly from that touch screen. And all of this comes for $329 with my coupon code that I will put down in the description and put right here if you're interested in it. But now that we've covered the specs of this usability. What can you really make with it? So here are some of my favorites here. This is my phone case. This is one from Moment. It's got a basic just wood block on the back, but now I've engraved a map of Middle Earth on the back. Great reference for if I need to remember the geography of Middle Earth. I've got it on the back of my phone. Super convenient. Another fun one that I will keep with me always is my wallet. I've had this for about 10 years now. It's just a basic leather one that I got clearance at J. Crew. And now it's got my own logo. It's not lttstore.com quality, but it's really cool to be able to engrave your own image on there, any logo, any design, if you have a fairly basic leather wallet. I also had some fun engraving onto paper, or you can do fully cutting out shapes there. So to make a nice looking birthday card, you don't have to learn calligraphy. You just have to download a calligraphy font or go with the most professional font out there of Comic Sans. They also included these great shapes preloaded on the SD card. Those were super useful. And several of these little blocks to test out with. I've already cut cheese holes in this one. I think the hardest part of using this laser engraver has been the software. And that software is ubiquitous across any laser engraver you use. Lightburn or Laser Gerbil are kind of your two big options. Lightburn is a paid software. You do get a free 30 day trial when you first download it but it is a really nice part of that software. When you buy it, you buy one year of software updates. And then at the end of that one year, you keep whatever version that is forever. So you don't lose access to that software at the end of the year. You just don't get any future updates, which is I think an amazing way to do software. But using either of these laser engraving softwares, I think was a little bit more difficult than say using Cura for 3D printers, because in Cura, you've got built-in profiles for each printer. So you can just select the printer you have, select a various built-in quality, and then most of them usually print. Of course, there's more tweaking you can do from there, but that's kind of a baseline to go off of. I wish there was something like that for laser engravers that would make this so easy. Whatever profile they used for slicing their test engraves, I think was really good and I wish I could just use that. That would have made starting off a lot easier instead of these first ones I burned straight holes through here 
or charred a lot of wood. But once you do get a hang of the software, there's so many projects you could do with something like this. So you can engrave and cut into a wide range of materials. It's basically gonna be your woods, your leathers, your papers are gonna be great. They also say anything that's coated, so like coated metals. If you have an aluminum water bottle like this, so you won't be able to etch into bare metal, but most things have a coating on it. Also, being able to cut your own acrylic sheets for if you ever want to build an enclosure around your 3D printer, it's really common to use acrylic sheets for that. And with this, you could design and cut your own instead of buying sheets that someone else has designed and cut. And with this large build volume, you'd be able to cut some pretty big panels out of this. They also have a list of things you should not be cutting. And these are mostly the nasty plastics that are gonna be releasing some really nasty chemicals if you're cutting into them. This is gonna be heating up and melting those plastics at a, at a really high temperature and is gonna be releasing a bunch of nasty chemicals. And I think that leads into our safety, which is something you really should consider when thinking about laser engravers. Safety is gonna be one of my highest priorities, especially when it comes to a hobby like this. And I'm really glad to see that Longer really made it a priority in several ways. They've got several different mechanisms in place to keep you safe. The first one is a fire detector. If it detects this starting a fire, it will shut off the machine immediately, but you should always stay nearby your laser engraver. So shutting off the printer is step one and step two will be putting out that fire. The next one is a motion detector. If this were to somehow you put it too close to the edge and your piece falls off and the laser falls off, instead of it shooting lasers across the room, it will shut off the laser to protect you in that way. It does have a motionless detector. So if somehow the motors were to break and it stays in one place, that can really cause a fire so it turns off in that case as well. And the easy on off emergency stop button is right here on the front, super easy to reach. The laser module itself comes with this guard that comes down almost all the way to your print object. It also comes with these nice laser blocking glasses which do a good job at blocking out on the edges and all the way around top and bottom and does a really good job blocking all the blue light. Whenever you're running this and you're in the same room, you really should be wearing these. Who cares about fashion when it comes to your ability to see the next day? You really should be wearing these anytime you're in the same room as this running. And there are a few downsides you really need to think about before getting any laser engraver. And the big one is where you're gonna be putting it. It's gonna be creating a lot of fumes because it is burning into wood or paper or whatever material you're using. So having a big enough room, some ventilation, some sort of filters nearby will be really useful. Another thing to think about is you really need to keep it, that room kind of enclosed. You can't have open windows nearby. If someone were to be able to walk by and look in and see that laser, that could really hurt their eyes. Also be thinking of anything that has eyeballs nearby. Make sure your pets are out of the room whenever you're using this. So for me, I was using the garage because it's a nice large space and then between runs, I could open the garage door and let some of that smoke out. Because after a couple engravings, the garage really started to smell like a bonfire. I do think in the future, I'll build some sort of box to put this in, just a lightweight, simple thing with a hinge to open. It doesn't need to be sturdy or structural. I just want something opaque so the laser can't get out. That would also allow me to put some sort of designated exhaust port that I can put some sort of fan and filter on. That might be a future video. If you're interested in something like that, let me know in the comments down below. So my biggest cons when working with this laser engraver or getting working with any laser engraver has been the software side of things. And I think that's just learning curve for me since I'm so new to laser engraving, but they do give you a little list of suggested profiles for different materials. But working with different types of wood will require different parameters. And I think that's just kind of a big difference between laser engraving and 3D printing. With 3D printing, you buy a spool of PLA from most manufacturers, and I use about the same spec with all PLAs. I might tweak them a little bit if the prints aren't turning out right, but for the most part nowadays, I leave it about the same. So overall, I think this is a really usable tool for makers out there. I'm really excited for projects that will combine laser engraving and 3D printing in the future. While 3D printers are able to make almost anything out of plastic, laser engravers can put your mark on anything else out there. This phone case I thought was cool, but fairly generic before. Now it's so unique and personal to me. And I think that's something really powerful that laser engravers can do. So I'm really excited for future projects being able to incorporate laser engraving into it. For sure, a laser engraver isn't for everyone. There are some safety and space requirements that are needed for this, and definitely some thought that needs to go into it before you buy one. Unlike a 3D printer, which I think 3D printers are getting to the point where they could be usable by almost anyone out there, but this laser engraver specifically did make usability way easier to use. And I think almost anyone could pick this up and start working with it. But that about wraps it up. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comments down below. And if you've enjoyed this video or enjoy this channel, hitting that like and subscribe button down below really helps me out and means so much to me personally. Well, as always, go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.